Name a game series where you get to, let's say, explore a creepy castle and battle the witch in a tower. Or fall asleep and dream about adventures you can only read about. How about save a kingdom and in the process of become a king? Or be a magician and fly to the stars on a champagne cork? Games like this are why I love retro gaming so much. Nothing else makes me feel like a kid again. So join me for a special episode of Michael's Retro Game Reviews as I will cover an amazing series of not just one, two or three, but four game reviews back to back in one video. Yes, you heard me correctly. I'll be reviewing four games. Castle of Illusion, Land of Illusion, Legend of Illusion and World of Illusion. And these games make up what I call the Mickey Mouse Illusion series. It's one of the most overlooked game series to make use of the Disney license. Now the first two games in the series, Castle and World of Illusion, were made by Sega themselves. And at the time, Sega held the Disney license and decided to do something different and unique with it. And the other two games in the series are Land of Illusion and Legend of Illusion. Now both these games were made by Aspect, a company that was tasked with some of Sega's IPs and licenses and always made their games in the same passion that Sega made theirs. They're more well known for making Sonic 2 than, and Sonic Chaos on the Mars system and Game Gear than they are for making Land or Legend of Illusion. So let's get on reviewing the first game in the series, Castle of Illusion. Sega would make and publish Disney games for their consoles and handhelds, but out of all the Disney games Sega would be involved with, only the Lucky Dime Caper and Castle of Illusion would get a series of sequels based upon them. But this series all began with just one game. The story starts with Mickey and Minnie doing what all good mouses and love do, twirl. Well, anyway, the evil witch Miserable steals Minnie and takes her back to the castle with the intention of stealing her youth. But what a strange name for a witch? Oh, I get it now, because she's miserable, hence she's called Miserable. Mickey enters the castle and travels through the many worlds within it to finally at the end battle the evil witch and save his girlfriend. The first thing that will stand out when playing this game is how gorgeous it looks. The levels are big, bright and colourful, and even animated too. Like the second part of the first level as it changes from a bright green forest to a dark stormy creepy level. And to think, this game came out in 1990. So that would make this a second generation title for the Mega Drive slash Genesis, and that's mind blowing. Because this looks like something that came out way later in its life, and Castle Illusion is a great starting point for this Illusion series. But the game does have a few issues that are thankfully resolved over the course of its following sequels. So let's get the flaws out of the way before we get to the good points. First, the animation on Mickey. No, I don't want to nitpick, but Sega, you could have added an extra frame or two of animation because when he walks, it just doesn't look right, it looks kind of jerky. Oh, so when playing this game, I kept having this thought, why is there no run button? The Genesis had like three buttons, and two of them are mapped for throwing stuff, which is basically the same function, and the other one is used for jumping, so it would have been totally possible to add a run button, but it probably would have been easier to have had Mickey walk at a faster pace. And on the subject of throwing stuff, I always found that function pretty much useless most of the time. Whenever I had a chance to use it, I just found it easier to jump on my enemies and bosses. Some of this fools me because I am a hoarder. <laughs> So I hauled my throwing things, and after a period of doing this, I thought I don't really need them. But another person with a different attitude will approach this differently and might be able to make more useless features than I did. There was only one instance in a level where it was not possible to progress without throwing an apple, gem or fire thing at a wall of blocks that you need to break to pass through. But since you have them, you might as well try and find a use for them, because at the end of each level, they're gone. So the best place to use them, well, the first level boss is really easy as long as you have about 10 apples. So if you can keep your distance from him, and after you jump each of his logs, throw an apple back at him, and just rinse and repeat, and bing, you're done. But the rest of the bosses, you're going to have to be more clever, as the throwing things are pretty much useless against them. Some of the bosses do have blind spots, like the boss on level 2, as you can just hide in the corners to avoid his attack, and when a coast is clear, jump on him when you get a chance. And the rest of the bosses, well, it's trial and error, as you learn their patterns to overcome them, which is to this game's strength. Don't get me wrong, this is a good game, and apart from these issues which hold it back from being a 16-bit masterpiece, this is a classic. And no game is ever 100% perfect, but it gets way more right than it gets wrong, so on to the good points. Back to the graphics, again they're really good, and the levels are imaginative, and no two look or even play alike. And they show a good range of colours that complement each other, and when you have a limited range of colours to work from, it's not an easy thing to make a game look good, and also give it depth and detail which this game succeeds at. 
The controls are tight and responsive, and jumping is really easy to do, helping to make this game fun to play. If you happen to miss a jump or fall to your doom, well you've got no one to blame but yourself. But there were a few instances in this game where you had to make a leap of faith, and that's all fine and good, but how can you expect to jump and land on a ledge when you can't even see it? But apart from this minor complaint, I have no beef with the controls or the jumping system. I might have been hard on Mickey's walk animation, but the rest of his animations are really good. Mickey looks colourful with plenty of character, and when he ducks, jumps and swims, his animations look smooth and fluid. And when you don't move him, he does his power thrust. Ooh! Oh yeah, now you're playing with power. Last but not least, this game's awesome soundtrack. From the opening tune in the intro to the end credits, I was hooked. It's such a lovely soundtrack with a vast array of tunes that are capable of making this game come off as mysterious and even scary too. And that's what you want in a good video game soundtrack, something that on its own is great to listen to, but also complements the very game it was made for. So overall, a promising start to the series. Now, Castle Illusion is not perfect, but if you never look at some minor flaws, you'll be rewarded with a unique game that's fun to play, has beautiful graphics, and a strong memorable soundtrack. So that's that one done, now on to Land of Illusion. Sega's Mars system may not have been successful as I hoped it would be, but in a few key territories it was number one game console. So Sega supported it for a long time with many of Sega's IPs that were given the 8-bit Mars system treatment, and one of them being is the Mickey Mouse Illusion series. Mickey Mouse is reading some fairy tales, when slowly he drifted to sleep. He woke to find himself in a fairy tale land, and right at that moment a girl looking like Daisy Duck appears to Mickey and says, please can you help me? The magical crystals have been stolen, and since they've been gone, all happiness has gone from the world and been replaced with sadness. And so, Mickey sets off on an adventure to find the crystals to bring happiness back to the world. Good luck, Mickey. The first thing that comes to your mind after playing Castle of Illusion and then playing Land of Illusion is, whoa, they changed everything. It was good this game did its own thing, it didn't borrow too heavily from the previous game, and in the process, it created a, a more simplified interface with the grab and jump system and attacking was simple, you just press jump again to bust up your enemy but where this game will succeed the most at is its introduction of puzzles to the series Some are just simple backtracking on the map to areas you couldn't reach before but after events that happen throughout the game they later become accessible and some involve using the abilities you learn throughout your adventure The brilliance of these abilities is at first you need them and that's how you gain them and if you're clever, you can use them throughout your venture to make life easier in parts of the game that I don't even think were designed with these abilities in mind. Now, I don't know if this is how the game was designed, or just a perk, but I'm going with perk. I'll give you some examples. When you shrink, you're less likely to get hit by enemies and spikes, and you have more mobility, and also helps getting through tougher areas of the levels. And the climbing ability helps in getting to hard to reach places that you might not normally reach by jumping alone. There are parts in levels where it's not possible to reach without using them and some of the puzzles involve finding keys. At first they're pretty simple, and later become more complicated as some backtracking is involved, and the puzzles become more elaborate. I found these puzzles to be pretty fun, and made the last few levels really enjoyable and challenging. But this game does have two minor flaws. Number one, it's very vague about what you're supposed to do sometimes. It does tell you what to do, but it's not always clear about it, so you can always go online and go onto gamefacts.com, there's nothing wrong with that. And second, when swimming, I found it hard to control Mickey. You repeatedly pressed jump to make him swim up, and by not pressing the swim button, Mickey naturally went down. This system is perfectly fine, but when you position to avoid the spikes and fishes, you have no fine control over your character when swimming. This frustrated me to no end, but luckily there's only one level you have to do any major swimming, so grind and bear it, and don't let these floors spoil was overall a good game. Right, now on some good points. Something that surprised me when playing this game was how tight the controls are, well apart from when you're swimming of course, and spot on enemy hit detection. These two things set down a lot of Mars System games, so the fact that this game for the most part aces them means it's head and shoulders above the average game on the Mars System. It's a decent enough adventure that will take more playthroughs to get through, and the last few levels are on the tough side, but it just makes completing them even more satisfying.
On to the music, and before you judge it, remember the Master System had very limited sound capabilities because of the cuss cut measures by Sega. The way better sound chips in the Japanese Master System weren't implemented in any other Master System model outside of Japan. But back to the music in Land of Illusion, it's pretty good. Not the best in the series by far, but with the hardware they had to work with, it's pretty good and shows a great range and there's even a few really good melodies in there. But most of the time, it's just decent background music. But the best tune is the one in the castle ruins, it's really creepy, and you know what? I love it. But if you love retro game music, then dive into this game and take it for what it's worth, and I'm sure you'll come away with a few tunes that you'll listen to long after you finish your adventure here. So overall, a good game of Master System standards. It's bright, colourful, challenging, but be warned, you will need a guide, as it is very vague and tell you what to do next. This game did take a lot of chances, it did its own thing, and in a way, it's a Black Sheep series, but without this game, I don't think Legend or World of Illusion would have taken as many chances, and totally deserves its place in the Illusion series. So that's two down, two to go, and next we have Legend of Illusion. Both Castle and Land of Illusion were ported to the Game Gear, and Legend of Illusion is a bit of a mystery as I only found about this game when I was doing research for this mega epic review of the Mickey Mouse Illusion series. From looking at gameplay of the Master System and Game Gear version, I'm guessing this game was originally made for the Game Gear as opposed to being a Master System port, but I've got absolutely no way to confirm this, heck I haven't even got an incorrect wiki page to start from, but if I'm correct, that would make this the very first title in the Illusion series that was originally made for the Game Gear as opposed to being a Mars system to Game Gear port. It's not an expensive game to get, just a very difficult one to get hold of, but the one that seems to come up most often on eBay is the Game Gear one, so if this review is the Game Gear version all the way, which is a nice change of pace. A long time ago in a kingdom far away, a shadow covered the kingdom of Pete and withered all the crops. King Pete was told by his advisor that the only way to save your kingdom was for a king to go on a journey and seek out the legendary water of life. Now King Pete, being a bit of a coward, said there's no way I can do that. And right at that moment, Mickey the laundry boy popped into the room. Aha! A fiendish idea popped into King Pete's head. King Pete decided to make Mickey an honorary king and tasked him with seeking out the legendary water of life. At first Mickey was hesitant, then he thought to himself, I'm no king, but I know where I can find one. So he raced off to the kingdom of Goofy to find one. And right from this point, your adventure starts. Now, if you played any illusion game before this, you should know what to expect, and it should be pretty easy to get into. All you've got to do is get used to the way your character moves and interacts with the world around them. This does not look like a typical Game Gear game, as most games for the system with watered down Mega Drive or Master System ports lack in originality and character. And talking about character, Mickey looks well animated and shown smooth movement, and the world around him is no slouch either, with levels being varied and designed around the locations and puzzles, with enemies that are in keeping with the settings of the levels which makes this game consistent. Attacking is done by throwing your bar of soap at enemies. The range of your soap attack is decent and other than one or two boss fights, I never had a problem with enemy hit detection. I suspect the hit detection was code differently for boss battles as opposed to regular enemies, and maybe they couldn't get 100% spot on. But this is forgivable and doesn't spoil the game for me. And talking about this adventure, it wouldn't be an illusion game without some puzzles thrown in. Almost every game in the Illusion series is built around solving puzzles in order to progress further on your journey. Whether it be pushing blocks to reach higher places, or throwing blocks and pits of spikes to step on, <laughs> they're also a good form of attack by throwing them at enemies. And also pushing and pulling blocks or pulleys to make lots of blocks appear or disappear to progress through the levels. Whatever the puzzle, it will involve blocks in a varied and imaginative way throughout the course of this game. It's a brilliant system of gameplay that never gets old and constantly challenges you. If you've got a decent set of headphones, grab them now because this game's soundtrack is amazing. From the opening tune in the intro to the end credits, I was in Retro Gamer Heaven. Now, if you love playing retro games for the music alone, this is one game soundtrack you don't want to miss out on. So overall, a decent length adventure with lovely graphics by Game Gear standards, a mesmerising soundtrack, again a unique gameplay style which is a series trademark, a fairly good story that ties in with the gameplay, the only bad thing I can say is questionable hit detection on a few of the bosses. Overall this is a good game that deserves its place in any Game Gear collection and my second favourite game in the Mickey Mouse Illusion series. Ladies and gentlemen, we saved the best for last, World of Illusion.
Mickey and Donald are magicians, and while preparing for their magic show, Donald finds a mysterious doorway and decides to step through it and disappears. So Mickey steps through it as well to find out where his friend disappeared to. Both our heroes are transported into a world of illusion where Mickey and Donald have to make way through many levels to fight at the ends the master of illusion so that they can escape and get back to performing their magic show. Now technically this would be the third game in the illusion series but I want to start off with Castle which was made by Sega themselves then focus on 2 made by Aspect which was Land and Legend of Illusion and then end the series talking about the last one that Sega themselves made which was World of Illusion. And I think it's a very fitting game to finish this Mickey Mouse Illusion series review on. The graphics are gorgeous, just simply some of the best I've seen on the Mega Drive slash Genesis. With bright vibrant levels that have an illusion of depth to them, with the way the background layering works with the four layer. And the animation of Mickey is spot on and looking very smooth, and yes finally he can run! Well it wasn't so much of a problem with Land or Legend of Illusion as Mickey moved at a decent pace. But in this game the run button is needed and very much welcome as Mickey moves at a slow pace but there's nothing wrong with that as you don't want to be moving too fast when jumping onto platforms. And jumping in general is spot on, I can't fault it. And attacking this time is done by swinging your cape at your enemies which is very fitting with the theme of this game. As well you're a magician. The range of attack is good and out of all the systems of attack and the series has used so far this one is my favourite. Why? Because it's simple and just works and you don't need to think about what you're doing. Any veteran of 2D platforms would pick up this game and without much of a learning curve work out what to do, which is always a good thing. The goal of each level is to simply get through each of the stages, defeat the boss at the end and move on to the next level. I found the levels fun, challenging, with a decent balanced boss at the end that didn't need as many hits to defeat as compared to those in Castle of Illusion. Your life bar starts with 8 cards and every time you die you start off again with 6. I thought this was a clever system. Now how many games have you played where you spent all your time collecting lives, power-ups, health, etc that you already had maxed out or you didn't need? But in this game you already have a full health bar so you have an incentive to collect the cards to keep your life bar full. Why not ask a friend to join you with the two player modes? This has to be the best thing about this game and you can play with Donald Duck or the series main character Mickey Mouse. Whether you decide to go alone or with your bud, the level layouts change. So in all you have three level layouts. Solo Mickey, Solo Donald, or the two player mode. This gives this game so much replay value as you at least have a reason to play through it three times. And the two player mode keeps up the tradition that was started in Land of Illusion. When playing with your bud, you'll have to work together to get through the levels. And the one player mode is just a straight up platformer. So as fun as one player mode is, I think you only truly get the full game experience when playing this game in two player mode. This is a fair game, challenging, fun, but not too difficult and best of all, infinite continues and a password system. So you don't have to restart your adventure from the very beginning. So overall, a great game with no real major faults and is in my opinion the best game in the series. Hit all the beats. It's got solid gameplay, amazing graphics and music and as good as one player mode is, it does not even touch the wonderful, incredibly magical two player mode. When I look at the last word in each of Tartsy's games, I can't help but think these games totally embody it. Ultimately, video games are an illusion. A clever trick of circuitry and electric current running through a circuit board with clever programming to create the picture you see on your screen. These games are art. And even if the canvas was a Mega Drive slash Genesis, Mars System, or Sega's very own handheld, the Game Gear. These games challenge the preconception of how a license could be used in a way to create something new with it, but of course staying true to it. If it wasn't for this game series, I don't think we've had the Kingdom Hearts series, nor do I feel any game based on a license that's come after this series would have been brave enough to take the kind of chances Sega did with Castle, or even had enough faith in another company like Aspect to do their own thing and run with Sega's Disney license and the Illusion IP property when making Land or Legend of Illusion. That's how important this game series is. So, my final thoughts. The Mickey Mouse Illusion series nowadays doesn't really get the recognition it deserves and that's a huge shame, so it's down to us retro gamers to keep the series relevant, and if you've never played in these games, now's a good time to start. So, if you want to move some classic Sega Disney game in action, look no further than this series. Castle of Illusion, Land of Illusion, Legend of Illusion, and World of Illusion. These games are worthy of your time and money and can be easily found for a fair price, but good luck finding Legend of Illusion as I had to import this bad boy all the way from down under. 
So the Mickey Mouse Illusion series definitely gets the thumb of approval. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.